Um, we're going to kick off right away with Christopher Bailey. Uh, he, comes, uh, he comes to this from a, a background in technology and the commercialization of technology. Circadia Health, he's going to get his eight minutes. I'm not going to, again, just like this morning, I'm not going to tell you about the company because that's his job. So ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the man from Circadia Health, one of the co-founders there, Mr. Christopher Bailey. Come and wow us. All right, let's hear it for him. Woo! Okay, so we're going to start with a video. If it works. Breast cancer affects one in eight women in their Guys, lifetime. Guys. Yet, mammography can miss 50% of breast cancers in some women, resulting in millions of deaths that could have been prevented. Unfortunately, our current technology can sometimes miss breast cancers, and I've seen that with my patients. It's devastating for women. So we need a radical change to detect breast cancer earlier. And this is it. This is the IT bra, the wearable that detects breast cancer even at the earliest stages. It's an intelligent insert that's worn comfortably under any garment. It tracks circadian temperature changes in tissue that indicate breast cancer. The data from the device is transmitted to a database for analysis, and results are sent directly to the physician within minutes. So the IT bra detects cancer at its earliest possible stages reducing chemo and radiation. And in terms of women who have dense breast tissue, the IT bra has nearly double the accuracy of mammograms. So not only is this early detection, but it is also a tool to help to reduce a half a million unnecessary biopsies. A new technology that could revolutionize breast cancer screening. But one company is developing a new screening tool unlike any other. Watch tonight, a bra that can detect breast cancer. Researchers are very excited about wearable technology that they say catches breast cancer in its earliest stages. This is game-changing innovation, and the IT bra puts the power of early detection back into women's hands. Just imagine how many lives we can save. The IT bra will forever change breast cancer screening for millions of women across the world. Okay, so there we are. We're a wearable device that uh, fits over the breasts. You wear for two hours every month. It connects via Bluetooth to the user's smartphone. The data is sent to our uh, predictive analytic core lab and the results sent back to the user. If there is an indication uh, of uh, consistent with cancer, a alert will be sent to uh, the user's doctor, and she will go uh, make an appointment for a further examination. This is the product. Um, those are the sensor patches and the Bluetooth uh, pod that clips on the front. It's 12 uses, one year. So it replaces the monthly uh, self-examination. We're launching in Asia because Asia has a particular problem with breast cancer. Uh, not only is it by far the number one uh, cancer in women, but the incidence rate is growing at twice the rest of the world. Very, very low rates of screening, and so therefore late presentation and high mortality rates. And people say, well, why don't they just invest in more mammographic screening? Well, health professionals know that actually mammography and ultrasound as imaging technologies have a problem with accuracy. And the problem is that uh, breasts have differing density of tissue. And 60 to 70% of women in Asia have dense breast tissue, which means that imaging for, those, for that category is less than 50% accurate. And not only that, but uh, they also have an increased risk of developing breast cancer. So mammography, and as I said, those are, both of those breasts have tumors, and there's a great deal of guesswork if, you're, um, if you have uh, tissue density. So mammography has a bit of a problem. Um, a high rate of false positives, which means that in the US, for example, uh, there are three quarters of the biopsies are on non-cancerous tissue. In other words, uh, they are unnecessary. Our technology, as uh, measured against pathology in our trials, is achieving an accuracy of 82%, regardless of breast tissue. So we find cancer by AI, not by the naked eye. So our technology is based on um, a, a known principle that in, in the breast tissue, when the tumor starts to invade, it disrupts 
the clock cells um, that regulate the circadian cycle. And so over a 24-hour period, uh, this is a healthy pattern, and this is indicative of, um, of a tumor. In a two-hour slice, we can see that already. So um, also, as you saw in the video, we're catching tumors earlier. Uh, of course, early detection is important for survival. Uh, mammography, as I said, uh, tends to catch tumors later, average size of two centimeters. In our trials, we were finding uh, malignancies of, of just a few millimeters. So we're a more accurate, comfortable uh, device. But not only that, as we grow the number of, uh, number of users, we'll be increasing our accuracy. And uh, it's not uh, an exaggeration to say we could well become very soon the world's largest breast cancer database. Certainly in Asia, national cancer registries are very out of date, very incomplete. So our data will be of great interest um, to um, uh, governments. Obviously in research around uh, therapies, uh, even other cancers that work on the same principle like, uh, um, like testicular cancer. And obviously insurance companies that are looking in to get into wellness and prevention. So we have a proven and protective technology, 10 years of AI, AI research at Nanyang University, clinical trials uh, in two sites uh, in the US. We have a, a US uh, FDA class two, and we have a number of patents issued and pending. Our commercial strategy, quite simple, we'll start off as a medical device. We want, uh, we want patients and we want physicians to understand our technology. If a user gets a, a, an alert and they go to the doctor, the doctor needs to understand our technology. The second phase will be that we uh, go over the counter. We are working on building our technology into uh, a bra so that a woman will wear our device uh, on an everyday basis without even being aware she's uh, wearing a, a medical device. We have some great partners. We're starting off in Hong Kong, uh, <coughs> here in the Science Park, and uh, working with, through, through Zulig Pharma as a distributor. Uh, Thailand is also one of our early entry countries uh, with a pilot with uh, Allianz. Um, Japan, and then from, uh, from here, we'll be going to other Southeast Asian countries. China takes a little longer, as you know, um, and into Europe and uh, Australasia. And our suppliers, Jabil, um, a leading uh, medical device manufacturer, and Brandix, you may not know, one of the world's largest OEM suppliers of bras will be building the, uh, the wearable device with us. Um, people have started to notice us. We won two um, unprecedented two Cannes Lions Awards. Um, there's a Cisco-sponsored documentary about us. Um, and I won't talk about the team because I'm running out of time. Rob Roy, our CEO and co-inventor, was supposed to be here, so I'm standing in for him. Technical questions for him, please. Um, and we're here looking for funding. Uh, we're nearly finishing our seed round, uh, of which um, uh, of, of three million. We're getting into our Series A, which will be to launch our product. Our product launch will be here in April or May uh, of this year. And that's for anyone who's interested in, in the specifics. Um, we're close to market, so um, uh, we have, a, I think, a very credible uh, growth story. Any questions? All right, we are going to go to the questions. We're just having a little bit of a technical hiccup. So if you want to talk a little bit more about the funding in the IRR and what your plans are for the Series A, uh, the pre-Series A and the Series A round, okay. please, you have, you have the floor. Okay, great. So um, the, the product is being manufactured by Jabil, actually, uh, in Shanghai. And we'll be, as said, we'll be launching uh, here in Hong Kong. Uh, we have a trial, uh, a, a pilot uh, in, in Thailand. So our model is really to be going through the private clinics and, and hospitals okay. um, and, uh, and, 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 go, and the countries where we can come in quite quickly on our US FDA um, uh, uh, approval. OK, Sean, we have a question from Sean up here. It says, how much is the IFRA ID device? Uh, I imagine that's retail, or is it? Uh, yeah, so the oh. end price will be around about $200. Um, Which so currency? US dollars. US dollars, yeah. OK. Sounds and good. The, obviously, we're, we're starting production in, in relatively low volume, so the cost price is, is, is relatively high, but we also want to make sure that accuracy is not compromised, so we're using top-grade uh, digital sensors. Uh, but obviously, as we, as we develop further, particularly into an apparel device, 
uh, we'll need to bring the cost down, and it'll go, you know, obviously to a broader market. Okay, sounds good. Uh, we're taking questions up here, but I know we have one right down in front. If you can make it loud. Thank you so much. Uh, it's a brilliant idea, but I just want and to. And he's got 30 seconds, so you've got to be quick. Sure. I want to dig into the data sure. set to help your AI pattern. Mm. You said that this is for the Asian uh, patients to be, yeah. but I guess the data you had were actually from the US, am I right? Thank well, you. one of the trial sites was El Camino Hospital in Silicon Valley, so the majority of patients there actually were of Indian and Chinese ethnicity. How big is the data, can you tell? Uh, 250 trial patients, and that's through to pathology. So, uh, Age group you scattered around? So age group? Uh, yeah, I don't know the information on age. I, I can, Thank you. I, Rob can tell you. Yeah. Thank you. All right, well done. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. This is Chris Bailey from Circadia. If you have more questions, come and track him down. That's why he's here. Thank you. All right, thanks, Chris. Well done.